Hi there, I'm Daniel Cooper. I'm from Spark in New Zealand, and I hope you're having a great day so far. Um, I'm here to talk to you about our exciting journey as we've gone from um, being a team which is siloed between retail and care and, and you know, sort of multiple facets within each of those organizations through to our current trajectory and ambition of creating a unified frontline, which is centered around customer obsession and flowing to where our customers are. So a quick recap on where we were about 12 months ago, um, literally about 12 months ago, we started talking about the unified frontline. Um, but prior to that, what we were up to is we had a unified channels lead. Um, and underneath him, we had a retail north leader uh, with area lead store leaders, two ICs who, who were you know, key holders for our retail stores. And of course, our ever important retail consultants. Same was true for our retail south head off. Um, then to the right of our screen, we had our contact center teams, you know, sales and service contact center um, organization and a customer solutions contact center organization, which I used to be part of. Um, it, within our areas, we had contact center managers, we had team leaders and customer advisors. And really retail did its own thing, contact centers did our own thing. Bridging the gap between the two were our omni-channel operations teams and our learning and development teams but they very much took information from one to the other rather than us all heading in the same direction as one. Mind you, we thought we were doing really well with the structure because if I was to dial up this slide, I don't know, back a further couple of years, that there would be a lot more boxes on that screen right now. Um, so whilst we thought this is pretty sweet, we're doing pretty well, we started thinking, how might we move our teams closer? How might we get even closer to the customer? This is a story about that. So we started with some principles and some hypotheses, you know? And here's one of them. Sales versus service fractures the customer experience. What you'll often get in, in retail stores of old is, hey, this is actually not a sale. The customers come through with a bill and go and please explain it to me. I'll biff it over the fence. Tell them, tell the customer, yeah, you should really talk to an expert in our contact center about this. Here's the 0800 number. You know, similarly, contact centers, you know, one of our resolve guys or girls gets a call um, and it's actually about a customer going, you know, I'm, I'm on wireless broadband. I want to look at moving to fiber. You know, that's more of a sales conversation. Um, hey, you know what? I'm a resolve specialist, but what you should do is walk into one of our stores or call this other number and they'll help you understand what works best for you. And so really not a pleasant customer experience when you put the customer at the heart of everything you do, right? Um, generalists versus functionally specific. We had a lot of great functionally specific people. You had, I am landline resolve chat only as an agent. I've spent 10 years honing my craft. I have all the knowledge I need in my head. Um, we've done a lot of work over the past 12 months at breaking down those mentalities and those silos. We still have teams who are isolated as temporary bubbles, but bubbles are temporary because either technology or the digital solution does not work across a generalist pool of people. Once we fix the technology or the digital solution, we will pop those bubbles. Digital tools unlock Omni. So in my role as digital channels lead, it's actually my job to ensure our people are treated as customers with the tools and technology that they need to make sure they're as efficient and effective as they can be in the conversations with their customers. Simple journeys, tools which treat them like customers rather than you know a CRM system, which is just so confusing that you end up more, spending more time having an argument with your CRM rather than a conversation with your customer. So we, we then went, okay, so, so those are some good principles. What about the volume demand? Is it, does it even work from a, a functional rostering, scheduling sort of perspective? So what we found in, is voice and physical demand are compatible. So care is busiest on Mondays and goes down as the week progresses. 
Retail volume is quietest on Mondays and goes up as the week progresses. Cool, nice little hypothesis. There are seasonal benefits as well. Christmas is busy in retail, lower in contact centers. February to April is broadband season in New Zealand because people change house. Um, that's busier in contact centers because people need help getting set up. Quieter in retail compared to the likes of Christmas. So rather than going and hiring a bubble force every Christmas or every October to, to help in retail, and then a separate bubble force every sort of February onwards to help out in contact centers, how might we just have one force which can flow to where the customer is? And then it works at an intraday level as well, the more we looked at the data. 7 a.m. To, to 11 a.m., busy on the queues. 11 a.m. to 2 p.m., busy in retail. 2 p.m. onwards, quiet in retail, busy on the queues again. Dad and mum have gone and picked up the kids. They jump on the phones after that. So we started getting excited about what we saw. Some more principles from us. Cross-skilling at scale is key. Training is absolutely key. We flipped on, our, on the 1st of October, we call that flip day. We flipped from our old retail and care silos over to our unified frontline. New leaders, well, existing leaders moved over into new roles. Um, and since then, it's just been an absolute mission of cross-skilling people. The lesson for us though has been, we tried to do what we sometimes do, which is get a bit too ambitious. We did not enable enough time for people to bed in those skills. So it was all well and good getting that theory in the classroom or, or on the virtual sort of training room. But if you don't give people that time to bed in that specific skill, they're going to forget it. Actually, hindsight being lovely and all that. Flow and swarm at the speed of thought. There's always a customer somewhere waiting to be served. Um, what I love about the UFL now is you go into our retail stores and they've got cue boards sitting up in their lunchroom um, or well, in, in their back rooms. And it, it's talking about how many customers are sitting in chat or sitting in voice waiting to be served. So I, as a home base lead, as we call them now, um, I might have six people standing in the front of my store. However, only three customers. What I'll go is, hey, two of you, could you please jump on into our virtual queues? Either slap on a headset or jump onto chat, help the customers out there. That's what we call flow. Flow is within the leader's control. However, when things really go pear-shaped, like we have an outage or a fiber cut or something like that, we initiate what we call a swarm. A swarm is a text blast that goes out to all leaders requesting that our home bases put out one person from each home base from the physical um, area onto our virtual queues. Next thing you know, you've got 58 people jumping on all at once, taking one call or one chat each, and the queues start abating. Empowered to solve everything. Empowerment is key to our customer obsession. We cannot go and create a unified frontline, but then put a whole bunch of process shackles around our people. So we're constantly reviewing our processes, even as early as, so, or as recently as yesterday, where you know mobile data overages and text messages, you know, to alert customers, et cetera, came through or came to light. And you know, what do we do about them? Well, we need to empower our people to have the right empathetic conversations, put themselves in the customer's shoes, and they're in there make a decision that works for the customer and for the organization. Driven by world-class leadership, leaders are crucial in this process. It is a culture shock to leaders because, you know, until what, six to 12 months ago, most people went, okay, cool. I'm going to be, you know, in the contact center. I'm a frontliner. I want to go places. Cool. I'm going to become a floor walker. Then I'm going to go into like a team leader role. Then I might go do some training. Um, and then I'll go be a CCM eventually. Well, that's all kind of been flipped on its head. Our leaders found themselves in very new situations where they went, okay, I've now got a store to run as well as a virtual contact center queue to, to look at. And that's interesting. What they quickly found was they were learning nuances of the craft or the touch point where, you know, contact center leaders needed to know how to make sure they followed the right process to open the store so they don't trigger the alarm and some of the stores have fog cannons and they don't you know destroy all the equipment 
Um, similarly, our retail leaders are learning, or our ex-retail leaders have, have learned all about cues and virtual and, and various skill sets and, um, you know, the nuances of having to talk to customers without using your face, your hands, without being able to read their body language and, and listening skills and all that good stuff. However, all of that aside, the customer experience and the knowledge that you possess is all just transferable. So the unified frontline, it's a way of working. Our people are cross-skilled across multiple customer touch points and are part of an end-to-end -end home base where they go ebbing and flowing to where the customer needs them to be. Our workforce breathes in and out like a lung where demand requires, be that within the day or be that seasonal like Christmas um, or be that um, you know, over a period of, of a larger period of time. It is the same customer that comes and visits us in a store as calls us, as messages us, as we go to the homes to do some installation work. So our people should flow to where those customers are. Our customer experience is consistent regardless of the channel. And we have a, a one of our points that we stress here as a, as a leadership team is consistently good will always beat inconsistently great. So we can be inconsistently great all you want, but we're just aiming for consistently good. Our people are unified in their customer obsession. They can see tons of opportunity now to build their careers at Spark. We've essentially opened up a whole new vertical for all of our people. If you were retail, you've now got a whole vertical on contact centers that was previously invisible to you and vice versa. Um, 12 months ago, most of our leaders and most of our support people and most of our frontliners could not put one or the other on, sorry, could not put both on their CV, just one or the other. So, what are the functions that bring the unified frontline to life? Capability. It's about training, it's about learning, it's about consistently improving. There are six touch points that are split into two crafts. The virtual craft is inbound calls, chat and messaging. And the last one is outbound. The physical craft is our in-home strategy where we actually go to our customers' homes. It's a bookable service where we go and either conduct some installation work or some resolve work or set up work more like it. And of course, we've got our retail network. And the third physical craft has not yet been stood up, but will be over the coming 12 months in that Spark Studio, where essentially for those customers who can't visit us in person, but want to have a conversation about a product or want to be trained on a service, we will do a video chat with them. Delivery. Now, this is a key area. This is where all our people live. This is where it all happens. Our UFL trees up into three markets, North, Central, South. We've got a market lead for each one of those. Each market lead under them has geo leads and the geo leads look after a geographical area consisting of home bases where there are home base leads who lead end-to-end -end teams. Now a geo lead will also have their own home base plus will have other home base leads reporting into them. We've then got the interlocking roles down here in purple. Um, what happens there? So a number of our interlocking roles ensure that, it, that we stay in step with the wider organization and vice versa. Our interlocks like human resources and finance, whilst they report into those areas in the wider part of the business, they're very much part of our team. And then you've got the consumer programs lead. Um, her responsibility is to make sure that she takes all the customer marketing information that's coming through, all the products and propositions that are coming through, and make sure that the unified frontline are capable to, to you know, confidently answer customers' questions and, and vice versa, they have all the information they need to answer and serve the customer. Also, they are pivotal to ensuring customer feedback goes back from the front lines to those marketers so that they can consistently learn and improve their marketing products, et cetera. 
And then you've got the consumer digital channel lead, which is myself. My job is to make sure I put the right tools in front of our people so that they can focus on what they do best, which is talk to the customers. Lastly, in pink, we've got our operations team. They form really the stable backbone of the organization or of our channels organization. You've got various squads in there, like our virtual assist team, our channel technology team, people in planning who are critical to the unified frontline and so on and so forth. I'm not gonna go through each and every one of these in, in, in detail. However, you'll get the gist. End-to-end -end teams, dynamic people working in those end-to-end -end teams. This is about the team of experts concept. I'm sure you've heard of it all, all before. So uh, what the unified frontline is, is the text concept expressed through virtual and physical, not just through contact centers of old. It's the same customer experience through multiple touch points is what um, we try and express through our unified frontline. We serve and solve everything overcoming the friction that we create as an industry and overcoming the, uh, the friction that we create as an organization. For my colleagues out there who are watching this who are from Talco land um, and most other industries really, you will know what I mean here. We create a lot of friction for ourselves through our own processes, our own system legacies, etc. Our people should not have to suffer for it. Our people should be able to navigate around it so that our customers don't feel like they've have a, they have had a frictionful experience. The unified frontline creates an awesome opportunity for us to have a BCP built in. We've even gone to the extent where Typhoon Vamco hit last year in the Philippines, where we lost about 30% um, of our contacts into workforce. Um, and when that occurred, none of the guys could um, jump on and, and take calls, even though we had work from home set up. Um, so what do we have to do? We, we had to close some of our smaller retail stores because we are very clear in our priorities within our channels team that our customers with resolve or fix issues will be prioritized above our sales channels. That's because we need to look after our existing customers. So what did we do? We stuck some signs up in, in the front of some of our stores, our smaller stores admittedly, just going, hey, we sincerely apologize for the inconvenience this has caused. However, we are unable to open our store today as our contact centers are really busy. We will be open again tomorrow. Um, what about voice of the customer is heard? Is absolutely pivotal that those interlocking roles take the voice of the customer from the front lines to the wider organization, demanding tools, process, product improvement, and, and efficiency improvement so that we continuously loop back with each other. And we operate on modern agile principles. Make our people awesome, deliver value continuously, make safety a prerequisite, and test and learn. Right out. So we've worked hard to ensure we distributed our leadership roles evenly across the board. Coming back to how we were 12 months ago, we had a retail leader, contact center leader, they never really did each other's role at all, or even understood it. Every new, uh, sorry, every physical location is now called a home base. And a home base is where our people are centered around. Most home bases have between 16 to about 27 people each. Every home base has a home base lead and a base support. As our leaders went through the structure change and they had to, you know, when they used to be either contact center leaders or retail leaders, and then had to apply for a home base lead or home base support role, every successful home base lead was paired up with the opposite skilled home-based support. So if I was successful as a home-based lead and I came from a contact center background, my base support was from a retail background. That ensured we were, um, we were complementing each other and our people were well served regardless of which touch point they come, came from or served a customer from. We wear multiple hats, not move through multiple roles. So my, um, uh, even in our leadership layer, um, we have home base leads who are also chapter leads for a certain craft. So if I came from a strong coaching background in contact centers, especially say Resolve, 
I also have a hat in addition to my home base lead role, which ensured that I spread and democratize that knowledge that's in my head about Resolve, not just to my home base, but also to my colleagues in my market. Every role is rostered to serve a minimum of two touch points. Most people have more than that. So my roster could reflect my day starting at 8 a.m., finishing at 4.30. Start my day in the back of my home base wearing a headset because that's when the queues are busy. So I'm rostered to be in, the, in my virtual queues. At 11 a.m., because of our scheduling and our footfall counters, we know that my home base is going to become busy in the in the physical sense. So I drop my headset, I go out there from 11 to two where I'm rostered to be in the front, um, talking to customers, serving them. And then from two o'clock onwards, I'm either back in my virtual craft because we know that my store is gonna go quiet again, or if I have a third touch point like in home I and I have a booking, I could go um, on my way to help a customer set up their wireless broadband modem or their home ecosystem because I've got that third touch point. Going back to hats, you can be a geo lead who is also who is responsible for about three to four home bases and coaching those home base leads. But I also have a home base of my own. So once again, my role is that of a home base lead. My hat is a geo lead because I'm coaching my colleagues in the home bases or coaching my fellow home base leads. creating a business continuity structure. So the UFL has helped us create a great BCP structure. We are focused on breaking down our silos. We have end-to-end -end home bases. We address any query or solve any issues, regardless of touch point through our home base. We're moving away from the traditional Auckland and Christchurch contact centers like we used to have, and we're de-siloing those. So as attrition occurs in those primary contact centers, we actually backfill into the regions. That allows us to just establish a, a rigorous BCP across the country. And then of course, yes, we have our Philippines contact centers with three sites over there as well. We're de-siloing to ensure we democratize knowledge. So once again, moving away from this information is in my head. Well, actually, that's no longer our way of working. Please document it. Please ensure everyone can have that knowledge shared across them. Um, because we democratize knowledge, we don't hold on to it, we don't be selfish. I'm on number four now, which is about implementing a unified digital spine. So it's all well and good us talking about, you know, flowing to work, a customer can come into um, our retail stores or into our contact centers and experience the same, or have the same experience from the same person who's trained in multiple crafts, et cetera. But a person can only remember so much, right? We need to help them. We need to support them. And, you know, we haven't done a good job treating our people as customers. If you look at our CRM, it's, it's a bit of a mess sometimes. So we're working on that. Um, first of all, we need to replace our voice and chat platform. We're currently sitting on a 17 plus year old PABX, which needs to go. Um, and we're in the process of doing that. We're upgrading our WFM tool. And, and this is going to be absolutely pivotal for us. So we've been through an RFP process. We've identified a successful vendor who can help us ingest footfall from 58 different physical locations, plus 17 plus queues in the contact center. Um, it creates a staffing requirement, but not just a total FTE, but also a craft requirement. So how many people do I need in physical? How many people do I need in virtual by touch point and then by home base? It creates a forecast, a schedule, and then we can monitor it in real time. So we're in the midst of that program and I'm super excited about how that comes across. Single source knowledge base. That's been absolutely key in, in ensuring a consistent knowledge repository. Most contact centers, people will have information that they've bookmarked from five years ago, or most retail stores, people will have processes that they remember from eight years ago. We had our previous knowledge base or knowledge bases, which contained over 18,916 knowledge base articles. We have since compressed that to under 3,000. We either purged them, merged them, or rewrote them entirely. Chat to messaging. So in order to enable flow, 
we need to have an, a, the ability to have asynchronous conversations with our customers. So what we have and what we are trialing at the moment is I could be in a physical touch point at the moment, so in my store, um, but I could be chatting, or sorry, messaging with a customer who's browsing our website, looking at options. However, Bob comes through the storefront gates and goes, hey, I'm interested in talking to you about a mobile phone. Because my conversation on my pause lane was an asynchronous conversation, I can pause that because we've set the expectation with the customer that, hey, we're gonna be about 30 minutes to respond to you. When we do, you'll get an in-app notification and that will tell you that we've responded. I can go serve my customer in the physical store, answer their query, help them with their purchase decision, whatever they've got, return back to async messaging and respond back to our customer. So I am Spark's resident contact center nerd. And to be completely truthful, I was cynical when we were putting the UFL strategy together. Um, you know, being part of this journey was scary, if I'm being honest. Um, but I can confidently say we're onto a winner. We've learned a truckload of lessons. We are consistently pivoting. But would I even for a second consider rolling back to where we were 12 months ago? Heck no. And here's why. In pink, you see what happened on the 17th of March, which is when the Philippines went down um, into COVID lockdown overnight. In purple, what you see is what happened once again in the Philippines, where our contact centers are, on the 12th of November. So it's a bit small. Yeah, 12th of November. And you, you can go, what, did you learn nothing since the, the 12th of March or the 17th of March? Well, we did. We, we had over 70% of our people capable in the Philippines of working from home. But when a typhoon hits, it also knocks out power and broadband. So we found ourselves in very much the same situation as we did during COVID. However, our UFL's ability to swarm to where the customer was, make some very clear targeted decisions as, as to what was the most important, helped us and, and helped us bring in an army essentially to be where the customer needed us to be. So whilst we weren't perfect by any means, on the 12th of November, our ASA was tons better our abandon rate was a heck of a lot lower than what it was in March. So would I go back? Absolutely not. To summarize, a people, a UFL is a way of working. We cross skill at scale. We flow and swarm to where the customer needs us to be. Our people are empowered to solve everything. And we have to establish world-class leaders who serve a customer, not a store, not a contact center queue. If you'd like to chat, feel free to drop me a note. Otherwise, have a fantastic day. Thank you for listening.